Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric the Old Jarhead here, and today I hope to save you some money. But before I get into the meat of today's conversation, first I want to acknowledge something, and that is that there are reasons to buy power stations, and perhaps more than one. Though the gist of today's video is going to move away from buying more than one power station, and that's how I'm going to save you some money. But before I get there, the one thing I do want to acknowledge is that those that live in apartment buildings, small, really small duplexes or homes or something where they don't have room for much else other than maybe one or two small power stations, hey, I understand that sometimes more than one power station can be a benefit. And I think that those that buy them primarily to go camping, use them for overlanding in their RVs, that kind of stuff, well, then having small power stations and maybe more than one may also be a benefit. However, in today's video, I wanna talk about why I don't recommend buying more than one power station, two maybe max. And so let's get into that. So to start out with, I got a power station actually to run a CPAP when I went camping. I'm an old veteran, I've got sleep apnea. Unfortunately, lots of us do. And without a CPAP, I don't sleep. So camping for me was not a good option. But with a power station, I can run my CPAP. Well, next, I also decided I wanted to run a refrigerator. And if you've watched my channel at all, you know that I have portable refrigerators. And power stations do a good job of running those small portable refrigerators. So having two, for example, in my overlanding setup with my Jeep, I can have a small power station in my rooftop tent that just runs my CPAP, and I can have another one in the back of my Jeep that keeps my refrigerator running. And depending on how long I'm gone, I may use a very, very small one on the refrigerator because a lot of times those will keep the refrigerator running all weekend, especially if I do any driving at all or I have a solar panel that I can hook up to them. And the one that I use in my tent, that's perfectly fine. If I'm going on a longer journey where I really need more power, then I might use a bigger one. So again, I don't wanna say that there's no reason to have multiple power stations, because obviously I do, I've got multiple power stations, and not all because I do reviews on them, but because I have uses for different sized power stations in different environments. However, if you're buying a power station as a home backup system, and you buy one and you decide, well, two is better than one, and three is better than two, and so on, and you end up with multiple power stations, I wanna talk about how you can get away from that and save yourself a bunch of money. So first of all, I'm gonna tell you about a power outage that I had about 12 or 13 years ago. I live in Eastern Washington, which is actually high desert. Most people think of Washington State as the evergreen state. We call this part of the state, which is about two thirds of it, the ever brown state, because truly it is dry desert. It's called high desert. It's, I mean, where I live, I get seven or eight inches of rain a year and that's it. It ain't green unless you water. So how do we have a major outage? Well, there's something that happens where if they get a big dump of rain over on the West Coast and it dumps all that water, particularly on the west side of the Cascade Mountain Range, somehow, and I'm not a climatologist or whatever you gotta be in order to know how this works, but somehow, as those clouds dump all that water out, they warm up and they create this big wind that we call a Chinook. And when that Chinook hits the east side of the mountains, it can be 70, 80 mile an hour winds. They can be hurricane force winds. In fact, the temperature can also rise 50, 60, even 70 degrees from one day to the next in one of these big Chinooks. We'll, we'll get snow on the ground in the wintertime and two weeks later it's all gone because we had a Chinook roll through. Well, a little over a dozen years ago, we had a Chinook that brought hurricane force winds and it downed a lot of trees on my block in particular. And it took the power out and it was out for five days and it was crazy. We hadn't seen power outages like that here. Normally they're only half an hour to an hour or two or three and that's it. Then they get it fixed. You know, a lot of times it's a squirrel in a transformer or something and, and they can get those fixed fairly quickly. But in this case, it took out such a large area that it took five days for them to restore power. Now, back then, I didn't have power stations. In fact, I don't even know if anybody had power stations back then. But I had a neighbor that had a big welder with a generator and he ran that generator during the day and ran an extension cord to my house and I was able to use that power from his generator to keep my refrigerator and my freezer running. That's gonna play a part in how you save money because all I needed was an extension cord. 
off of his generator and I was able to keep everything cool, didn't lose any food in my refrigerator or my freezer over that five day span. Now, I really didn't have any lights, I didn't have any heat, I didn't have a stove to cook on, so we basically camped out in the house. And we used a camp cook stove and sleeping bags and candles and hurricane lanterns and that kind of stuff to, to be able to function more or less, but that was it. And we survived five days that way. So how does that pertain to not buying multiple power stations? Well, I think the first part of that is those extension cords. Because in a power outage, do you really care if you've got an extension cord going from one room to the next? Personally, I don't. And if that means it can save me $500 to $1,000, because extension cords are pretty cheap, well, that makes a lot of sense. But could you do what we did on just, say, a 2,000-watt power station? Well, no, we couldn't. So how am I going to save you money? You're already thinking, well, if I had two of those power stations, I'd be better off, right? Well, hear me out. First of all, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I like to take standard LifePo 4 batteries and just plug them into the solar port on a power station. And that gives me the extended length that I might need to go through a, a little bit longer outage. But we're still using a power station in a way that it's not really designed to be used. If we think about a power station, what is it? It's a battery that happens to have an inverter and it has some breakers and it's got some USB and 12 volt ports and that's it. But you could do all of that for less by building a small off-grid system. It doesn't necessarily have to be an off-grid system per se, but if you were to say, take LifePo4 batteries and get more of them because they cost a lot less. Imagine if you're gonna buy a thousand dollar power station or two power stations that run you $500 each, well, for a thousand dollars, you could get five of those batteries, which would give you a heck of a lot more power. But if you only got, say, three of those batteries, which is still a lot more power than you would have with two power stations, unless you've got really big ones that are hard to move around, all you'd need then is an inverter. And if you get an inverter and you run a fuse between the batteries and the inverter, you've now got 120 volt power. And inverters are fairly inexpensive. And I would say if you're doing this for home backup, you don't have to go buy the most expensive, best inverters there are out there. You could get yourself a less expensive inverter that say runs $300, that gives you 3000 watts of pure sine wave power. And if you've got say four batteries at less than $200 a piece, you're still only around $1,000, maybe 1100. And I could put some links down below to show you what I'm talking about. But the gist of this is by getting batteries instead and putting an inverter on those batteries, you've now got all the power you need to run your house. If a 2000 watt hour battery can run a refrigerator and a freezer for say 24 hours, by getting say five times that in batteries, so 10 kilowatts or 10,000 watts, you could easily run your home for five times as long. And if you had a 3000 watt or even 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter that you hooked up to your batteries, you could just run extension cords to things that you needed to run. But if you're buying multiple power stations in order to run your house during an outage, I would ask, why not just buy a pure sine wave inverter and you can get two or 3000 watt inverters that would be more than enough power and you can get them fairly inexpensive because you don't need one that you have to run every single day. You don't need a thousand dollar inverter because you're not running your whole house on it all the time. You can get by with a two or $300 inverter that's gonna run everything you need to run during that five or six days that you've got an outage, even two weeks. They tend to run fine. In fact, you could even go one step further and get something like the Lee Time or there's Power Mister and EG4 and all kinds of other brands, but I, I'm using the Lee Time because of the cost. They run about $560. So for $560, you get a 3,500 watt inverter charger with MPPT charge controller and everything built into it, including breakers and things. You plug that into a couple server rack batteries you're talking $2,500, which is basically what you're looking at if you bought, say, two or three power stations, except now you've got 10 kilowatts of power instead of four or six kilowatts for the same price. So by buying LifePo4 batteries and connecting those to an inverter, or in this case, an inverter charger all-in-one unit, 
not only do you have enough inverter power to run pretty much whatever you want to run in your house, you're not going to run your heat pump, you're not going to run your 240 volt stove, but let's be honest, those take a lot of power. And if you're in a power outage, well, your mission there is just to try to keep some lights on, keep your refrigerator running, keep your freezer running, and maybe power up your phone keep your laptop working, stuff like that. Maybe a radio so you can hear the news. And you can use extension cords to go from that inverter to wherever you need to go. Now we've talked about charging in past videos, but of course you can add things like DC chargers, you can add an MPPT charge controller with some solar panels and keep that stuff running indefinitely if you had to. With the all-in-one systems, as much as I am a component kind of guy, I happen to like each separate piece to be separate, but those all-in-one systems can work better, in my opinion, than a power station. Yes, you're not gonna just pick it up and move it around your house, but if you mount it to the wall in your garage and plug 10 kilowatts of batteries into it, you can then run solar power to it and they have generator ports. So in conclusion, you don't really need to buy multiple power stations to survive longer outages. So I hope if you take a serious look at that, you might see that multiple power stations aren't really the answer unless you're in one of those scenarios where you have them for camping and RVing or you live in an apartment or something like that where it's just you just don't have the space to put more batteries and an all-in-one unit mounted to the wall or something of that nature. But you could just use an inverter in those batteries if you have the space for them and run extension cords. I hope that helps somebody out. Meanwhile, I'm gonna drop another video right here just for you. Check it out. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.